Hey what's up everyone, I hope you are doing well, this is Jack from Byprogrammers.com and today in this video we are going to talk about different ways to generate income as a programmer. Before we begin, please allow me to briefly introduce myself. My name is Jack Tong and I have graduated as a Bachelor of Computer Science back in 2014. I have 6 years of working experience in both big and small companies and currently I'm working in a small startup company as a front-end developer. Over the past 6 years, I have tried a lot of different things which includes blogging, making YouTube videos, freelancing, building our own apps, and I was even a tutor for a short period of time. Alright, now with that being said, let's get started. The first point we got here is to become a freelancer. Just in case if you don't know, I got this definition from Wikipedia. Freelancer is actually referring to a person who is self-employed and not necessarily committed to a particular employer long term. To put it simply, a freelancer is a person who works for themselves rather than for a company. There are basically three different ways you can become a freelancer. One of them is to join through online platforms such as Fiverr.com, Upwork.com, Freelancer.com, and a lot more. If you would like to give this a shot, I would strongly recommend you to try out Fiverr.com and Upwork.com because these two platforms did a pretty good job in maintaining their ecosystem. Personally, I had quite a bit of bad experience with Freelancer.com a couple of years back because this platform has way too many developers which has resulted in a super low development cost due to the strong competition. Next, you can actually join a company or a team as a subcontractor. As a subcontractor, chances are you wouldn't need to do the heavy lifting of turning leads into clients as the company or the team will find and secure the client and then outsource a part of the project to you. Last but not least, you can actually become a freelancer through your personal platform which includes your own website as well as your social media platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and so on which basically allows the potential client to look through your portfolio and contact you if they are interested in what you're doing. Alright, now let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of becoming a freelancer. One of the best things of being a freelancer is that you will have the ability to work anywhere, anytime you want. There will be no office politics, no annual performance reviews, casual work attire, you can wear sweatpants if you want to, and you can also call the shot and decide which client to work with. However, as a freelancer, chances are you may need to hustle 24-7. There will be no paid time off, no maternity or paternity leave, no bonuses, no annual increments, no claims, no nothing. Well, basically, you are on your own. On top of that, you may need to handle multiple different clients probably at the same time. In other words, instead of having one boss as a full-time employer, you will have to deal with many different bosses as a freelancer. Look, I'm not saying that being a freelancer is a terrible job. In fact, I strongly recommend programmers to work on freelance projects as it really does help in improving both technical and soft skills which are very crucial in our career. So my personal advice to you is to get yourself a full-time employment as a programmer and at the same time work on freelance projects as your side hustle. Alright, so that's all I got for freelancer. Next, we can also actually generate income by writing programming related articles. There are quite a few ways to do this and one of them is to start your own programming blog and later you can monetize it by putting ads like this on your blog. Starting your own blog is very easy and straightforward. You can find tons of tutorials online on how to set up a blog. The hardest part of this entire process is to be enrolled in Google AdSense program. Personally, I have been rejected by Google AdSense for more than 40 times and today we still couldn't put ads on our blog mainly because our blog doesn't have enough unique visitors. Obviously, it won't be easy so if you are not ready to comment, you can also start off by writing for other platforms such as medium.com and monetize your article through their medium partnership program. One great tip to get more exposure to your article as well as your profile medium is to join some of the big publishers such as Level Up Coding and post your article through these publishers instead of your own profile. Alright, so the third point we have here is to become a YouTuber. The minimum requirement before you can put ads on your video is that you will need to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 valid public watch hours in the last 12 months. Personally, I have uploaded more than 20 programming related videos on YouTube and I have accumulated approximately 1.4k subscribers over the years. I know it's just a small channel but I do have some experience that I can share it with. First thing first, being a YouTuber is very time consuming. Before I can publish a video, I'll need to plan, study the topic, 
scripting, record the video as well as to edit the video, which will usually take me around 1-2 to two weeks just to get the video ready. After spending so much time in making a video, most of the small channels like mine are actually not making money from YouTube. Well perhaps you can get a few dollars per month if you're lucky enough, although we can't really make a lot of money from YouTube unless we have millions of views. YouTube can actually open up a lot of opportunities that you can never imagine. What I did was I have included a link of my YouTube account in my resume and it has certainly helped me to streamline the entire interview process. So my point here is, if you want to become a YouTuber and you have passion in making videos, try not to focus Focus too much on the money that you can make from YouTube. Instead, focus on the opportunities that YouTube can give you. Alright, so point number four is to build an app. Just in case if you're not sure, I'm going to briefly explain to you how we normally monetize our app. All the apps that you see on the Google Play Store and Apple App Store can be divided into two different categories, which are free app and paid app. For free apps, we can monetize it by putting ads in our app through Google App Mod Program, which is very easy to sign up and get it running in the app. Besides that, we also have what we call freemium app, which which is referring to an app that's free to download but it has in-app purchases. Alright, that's all for free app. Paid app, on the other hand, requires you to pay a certain amount of money before you can download. And paid app also can include in-app purchases as well. Okay, that's enough for explanation and now I'm going to show you the app that we have built previously. The first app that we have built is called AnySound Sound Effects app and it was released in the Apple App Store back in October 2017. AnySound is basically an app that consists of all sorts of different sound effects that users can play easily. It was more like a a warm-up app for us as we just started learning iOS development during that time. After that, we have worked on another app called AnyCard Card Holder app and it was released in the Apple App Store back in June 2019. AnyCard is a card holder app that allows you to store any sort of card, be it a bank card, loyalty card, and so on. The reason why we built this app was because we tend to forget to bring a loyalty card whenever we go shopping. We tried to search on the App Store but we couldn't find any app that suits our needs. That's why we built one for ourselves. Okay, enough of storytelling. Now let's let me share with you all one important lesson that I have learned from building apps and that's again, don't focus too much on ads revenue. Instead, focus on the opportunities that you can get from app development. The reason why I'm telling you this is because our earnings for these two apps are actually very, very little, as we are earning only a few dollars per month. However, with these two apps that we have developed, I managed to find myself a job with a pretty handsome salary as a senior iOS developer without having an iOS certificate. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, the fifth and the final point that we will be covering in this video is to become an Instagram influencer. I know some of you are confused because Instagram doesn't have any monetization program. But before we get to that point, let's first talk about how we as a programmer can become an Instagram influencer. Now I got these images from Instagram and these programmers are actually considered as Instagram influencers because they have tons of active followers and each time they post a photo on Instagram, they will receive a lot of engagements as well. As you can see from these pictures, to become an Instagram influencer, all you need is a professional cool and neat workstation. In fact, I wanted to become an Instagram influencer as well, but unfortunately my workstation looks something like this. Okay, so how can we actually make money on Instagram? There are many three different ways to do this, and the most common way is through affiliate marketing. How affiliate marketing works is that some business owners may approach you and send you one of their own products for free. Then, in exchange, you will need to advertise for them through one of your posts. Another way to monetize your post is through sponsored posts. How it works is that the advertisers or the business owner will pay you directly in order for you to advertise for them. Last but not least, you can pretty much become an entrepreneur as you can design and sell your own products or you can advertise a project that you're working on and so on. In fact, there are a lot of possibilities if you are an Instagram influencer. Alright guys, we have talked about 5 different ways to generate income as a programmer, which includes to become a freelancer, write programming articles, YouTuber, build your own mobile app, as well as Instagram influencer. So if you have any questions or you have anything to add on, please comment down below. If you like the video, be sure to hit on the like button, share it to your friends, and also don't forget to like and follow our page or channel for more videos like this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy coding. Peace.